Um, so I can't like everything else surprising, like on a, like on training or what I had to do. I don't, I was never, I was never surprised on that. My, my surprise was going back to the basics, you know, being at the, I would say the greatest show on earth, the best, the best of the best. And then when you, when you start off, even though you're a lot of guys are coming from Ranger Battalion, SF, um, uh, the, the seals, um, air force guys, like we were, we're already shit hot, right? Like you'd think you'd just go right into doing badass shit. Now you go back, you go back to day one shit, which was fucking awesome. I, and I have some questions that we're going to get into later with your shooting instruction about the basics. Cause I've heard you say some things I find very interesting, but with, with the guys on Delta, now you're in a place with, like you just said, the best of the best of the best. Did most of them have your mindset of, I live for this shit, like this is my passion? Is yes. that kind of how you have to be to be at that level? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that is, that's why it was, it was such a great opportunity and a great place to work. When you have, when you have guys that you're going on target with that are all like-minded, they want to be there, right? They, there is no fear. They, they, like, I mean, it's, when you go to when you go to a hit, it is literally a fucking race to see who can get there first. Well, that you know how exhilarating that is to be with twenty or thirty fucking dudes that don't fucking care if they get shot. Like that's it's just the it's the greatest feeling ever, and it's it's almost addicting. And that's why you just you want to just keep acquiring fucking targets because I mean you're you're with a bunch of dudes that are not only the best of the best on shooting and tactics, but they all want to be there. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. I, um, pretty, pretty fucking cool situation to be in. I can't even imagine. It sounds so unbelievably awesome. Well, did you, uh, did you spend most of your time then in Iraq? Uh, I would say, well, yeah, most of, most of my deployments were Iraq. I think I had, five or six well it might have been six or seven in afghanistan and when you are doing you know you're on the helicopters you're in the humvees and you're going to a raid like you just said you got 20 or 30 guys they all want to be here they're amped up do you feel before you even get off the vehicle before you even fire that first shot there is no force on god's green earth that is stopping us who's ever in that house we are going to kick the living shit out of them yep and that and that that's just that's the mindset every every shooter should have like le guys agency guys um home defense and anyone who holds a gun for protection i mean that should be the mindset unfortunately it's it's not um so to be going on target with that like like there that that is not only the mindset but it's uh, i don't i mean i think it's it's straight up true but i mean like, like you you 100% believe that 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 is the case like you're you're the fucking baddest motherfuckers coming in there is no one going to there's no one going to be there to stop you i mean um, you, you, and, and people that get shot over there i mean it's it's straight up luck i mean cuz they're they're most of the, most of the guys shooting at you aren't aren't aiming right so but yeah the the that is that is what you're feeling when you're going in like for one, no fear, but everyone, everyone on that helicopter knows that they're the baddest motherfucker out there. One of the things I'm always curious by when I interview special forces guys, SEALs or whatever, and they talk about combat is kind of the human element. And I have always get a range of answers. I'm curious to hear what you said. When you get into these firefights, when you do these raids, when you're taking out the bad guys, is, is there an element they are like, oh, you know, that could be someone's son or that could be someone's fa father, or is it more like, fuck them? They're, they're, they would drill holes in our skull. They kill innocent people. Who gives a shit? They're bad guys. Or, or do you kind of, is there a human element or is it just, no, fuck them, let's kill them? I, th I think I, well, yeah, don't, probably sound like a fucking asshole by saying that. No, I, I never thought that once. That never entered my, my head. And I, I mean, most of the guys I work with did not think about that. I, I have talked to people that you know, had, had contemplated that or, or thought of that, but me personally, never, never entered my brain. And I, I would, I will never look back and say, Oh shit. Like that might've been someone's freaking dad, you know? Well, look, and I agree in, in, I've never been in the military, but I'm fascinated by military history. 
it, 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 the reason I ask that is because we have people in the media, in college students on college campuses, and when they talk about like terrorists, they try to like humanize the atrocities. Like, oh, they're not that bad. You need to understand. And I'm like, that's mm. bullshit. What are, yeah. what are they? What are they trying to do to us? Right. Exactly. You know, like, like, why would I feel sorry for someone while while I'm coming in on infill and the birds and I'm getting RPGs thrown at me and freaking rounds thrown at me? Like, they're trying to kill us. Like, so yeah, I there. <laughs> Um, I, I would never feel I, I, I never felt sorry for anyone on target ever. Right. Um, are there any moments when you look back at your career that stand out as like maybe the one or two moments that you'll be telling these stories forever is like that was such an unbelievably cool thing that you can talk about. I'm sure a lot of it's classified. But is there anything that you can talk about where you look back and you'll always say, I cannot believe how awesome that was? Yeah, well, definitely I have I have one and I've said so people that are listening that have already heard this, it's repeat because it the one the one that does stick out to me. So when we go on target, we're we're a force, right? I mean there there's guys with you. Like so so there's I mean, I, I would say 50, 60 targets where there's been multiple dudes like in a compound running around shooting at us and we're shooting at them, but you always have a team with you or two teams with you. So there, there was one one time where I, I laddered up on the wall and there, there just happened to be one ladder on the wall. So I was the only one up there. Other teams were on other walls in the compound, but they couldn't see what was going on. So I was up on the I was up in the wall and I just got lucky as hell where I was at in that compound. I was the only one who could see like the, no one else could take shots or anything. And it just all hell broke loose. And um, so I, I got very, very seldom. Do you get to even make your make like make your own kill, but like individually? Because you have we're all so good that everyone's so fast. If if something if if there's a bad guy, we're all shooting them, right? Right. So and then it's even more seldom to get a chance to shoot multiple dudes by yourself. So I was on I was on the wall. Um, all hell broke loose. I had like I think it was I think it was five dudes um, in the compound that were I, mean, I had RPGs coming at me. I had grenades being thrown at me from the left. RPG coming at me from the front. I had small arms coming at me. I'm the only one of them up on this wall. Um, and I got so I got to engage all those targets by myself, and it was not only it was good for like training because up until then multiple multiple targets by yourself. It was always like the rhythm drill or cadence drill. And I remember like I mean, to this day, and it's good as an instructor, I can like now bring this to civilians, like better ways to train. I remember on the wall by myself shooting these dudes thinking the fucking way that I've been training multiple targets is fucking totally wrong. Like rhythm drill and cadence drill is not a thing because you can only shoot one guy, like you can only kill one guy at a time, right? And that's, that's what was, that's what it was. So it was cool for that on the train side. Funny thing was on it because everyone wants to get some. So like I was, it was, we had, for some reason, we only had one ladder. And like, while I was shooting, you could like, I read, I don't know if I saw them or I just heard them underneath me. They were all like, what the fuck is going on? Like, I'm just getting it on right on the wall. No one else was getting any play. <laughs> so they were, they were scrambling to get fucking ladders. The other teams were trying to come over the wall that I was at. <laughs> it was, but. That would like if, if I was to pick out any any hit that I've been on that that would have been the one that stands out because I actually got to engage multiple threats by myself with, with no help. And, and it, was just, that, it just never happened. Was that in Iraq or Afghanistan? That was Afghanistan. That is absolutely wild. When you do when you guys come back from a from a mission or maybe you're back in the U.S. after deployment. Is it kind of like how, you know, athletes, they're, they kind of one up each other, right? When they're like, yeah, you threw three touchdowns, but I threw two and I rushed for two. Uh, do you guys like get into debates over like oh, who oh, did yeah. the most badass shit? Yep, absolutely. It's usually the new guys, you know, because they, they, I'm telling you, it is the greatest show on earth. Like we pick, we get to pick targets that are, that we know we're going to like either take contact at or it's going to be, it's going to be a big target. Um, 
so it's all so they're they're finally getting their shot to like get in real good gunfights, you know. And it's always the it's always the newer guys that are that are coming in. They're like, man, you know, do you see me do this? Or do you see me do that? And, and it's always the guys that have like multiple multiple deployments with the, you know. They're like, man, we all fucking did the same thing, you know. <laughs> and they're like, oh, well, we were we were the first though, <laughs> you know. Yeah, we talk about it all the time. I mean, it, and it and it's funny. It's funny to hear the perspective of the newer guys that are that are just getting there compared to the guys that have that are that are seasoned that have been there a while it's 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 just a every it's like literally ha- it, it becomes just an everyday occurrence i mean we're, we're going on target sometimes three three times a day three times fucking, a day which is fucking just insane yeah and and did you have a problem with that or you're like hey if there's a fourth and a fifth option let's go hit yeah. more targets <laughs> For- today for me and, and most of the guys I worked with, yeah, it's it's I, I like to I like to if you were you in college? When what 9-11 happened? No, like you, did you go to college? Oh yeah, I went to college. I went to the university. Was there, ever, was there ever a time where there was like your guys like your buddies were going out to a party, you didn't really want to go, but they were all going, and then you're like, fuck, I'm gonna go because it might be the best fucking party ever. Right, you don't like, want to miss it. Miss it, right? Because you didn't want to miss out on like the best fucking thing. Well, that's how gunfights work. Like you never wanted. Whenever you heard another team going out and getting a good fu- gunfight, you're fucking jealous. Like you were like, God damn it! So <laughs> you want you you wanted to go out constantly because you're always looking for the best party. You know, you're always looking for the the, the next best gunfight. 